welcome to the OC, <laughs> bitches. Oh, hello, bitches. It's so good to see you. <laughs> uh, today we're doing uh, season two, episode eight, The Power of Love. Yeah. Um, it's so, so much fun to be here in our studio at the Cohen House because also our guest really needs no introduction because you know him, you love him. He's agreed once again to give us his time <laughs> to chat about The Power of Love and his album, Seven Days in Memphis, that was inspired by this app, none other than Sandy Cohen, a.k.a. Peter Gallagher. Woohoo! Woo Hi, Peter. How are you guys? <laughs> oh, this talk about the power of love. I love you both so much. It's Aww, so good to we see love you. you. And it, we're just so happy that you're here in person with us, not quarantined in Canada while we talk to you. <laughs> I know that I was so impressed we pulled that off, that the Wi Fi stayed and we got it all together and well, I think we've gotten a little better at this medium of podcasting. and uh, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> it's so much fun to see you. You're the first, um, well, we had Michael Cassidy, actually, and you're the first, um, second actor to be in our studio. And so thank you so much for making the long trek out to Van Nuys. It was so easy. <laughs> I'm honored. <laughs> I think the last time I saw you in person, Peter, I feel like we ran into each other at the airport. airport. I remember seeing you in New York, which I have to give you some pictures because they're really oh, cool. Oh, right. That was actually, I was there doing Gotham. And Peter, you were, of course, I don't know what, you were there working, or, or, or Catherine, your daughter, Gallagher, that we've had on. She was doing her Broadway debut, 2015. Oh, 2015, that would have been Spring, Spring Awakening. Awakening at the Brooks Atkinson Theater. Oh my gosh. Okay. On the subject of Catherine Gallagher, who I is my idol, who I look up to, who we, <laughs> had, on, who we had on the show. <laughs> so just brilliant and effervescent. And how were the Tonys? Yeah. I just want to ask. The Tonys were awesome. Yeah. <laughs> the Tonys, by definition, are painful. Because <laughs> if you're going to the Tonys, you either have been nominated, and chances are you won't win, or you haven't been nominated and you have to perform, or, you know, all the months leading up to the Tonys, if you're in a Broadway show, it's exhausting. So there's a certain amount of excitement and a certain amount of dread. And this is the best Tony Awards I've ever been to because I had nothing to do with any of them, and I was just my daughter's date. But it was really cool because we saw it was at a time, you know, it was such at a vulnerable time in Broadway's history with the pandemic mm -hmm. and the question whether things were going to succeed or not succeed. And she, she, Catherine was nominated for a Tony Award for Best Supporting Actress in a Musical for Jagged Little Pill. And she won a Grammy Award mm -hmm. for the same show, for wow. Lance Morissette's Jagged Little Pill, which they just closed, unfortunately. I'm not that broken heart about it because she was getting raped eight times a week. So as her dad, it oh was my God. Like, Oh, wow. It was really, a little rough I to... knew that the psychological kind of uh, wear and tear is substantial, especially if you're doing it in a show that's like that. That So it was a great, great, great show, and I'm so glad she did it, but I'm glad she's not doing that anymore. But uh, we had a blast. She looked beautiful, and and she asked me to go. So I mean, how cool is that? Yeah, yeah. it's awesome yeah. to be your daughter's date, yeah. nominated for a Tony. I know, in fact, I had two jobs going on at that time. And for each one of the contract, it was like, I have to be here for <laughs> this time. As long as you let them know beforehand, sometimes they can accommodate, right? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes. Well, speaking of Broadway, just the fact that um, I want to get right into, of course, one of the reasons that you came back for this is your singing voice and your performance and the fact that you, um, on our show, but you started in Broadway. And I just wanted to say that this morning as I was getting ready, I put on Spotify and I put on Seven Days in Memphis and it gives you this, you know, shuffle of all Peter Gallagher stuff. And I'm listening to Seven Days in Memphis and it bounces back to Guys and Dolls and I'm in the <laughs> bathroom um, doing some hair and all of a sudden I hear a song and I'm like, what's that from? And sure enough, I look and it's Idol Maker. And I was like, <laughs> it was all Peter Gallagher this morning and it's such a lovely, lovely album. And, and I just wanted to talk about the fact that I know, just in my bit of research, I know that Josh had been looking for a way to incorporate your singing into this episode. Did you know how that was going to come about? Did you have any input or um, <laughs> how you were going to sing in this episode? Or did it just spring? Did you just read it in the script? Um, <clears throat> I didn't. I don't think I just read it in the script. 
I think Josh spoke to me about uh, wanting me to sing a song, and he wanted it to be an 80s song, which immediately filled me f- full of dread. <laughs> Because the only 80s musicians I could think of off the top of my head that I really would want to cover would be Bruce Springsteen. Mm-hmm. And um, and I didn't I didn't know any, and none of those songs were quite right. And I, and I was thinking, and of course I went to my wife, who knows more about music than any human being alive as far as I'm concerned. I would never sing a song in a show if I was doing my own show that she hadn't approved or, you know, she, she's just really good at that. And uh, so, so that was a challenge, trying to think of an 80s song. And then Josh just turned it around and said, how about Don't Give Up On Me? And I almost started to cry. <gasps> because I had forgotten when I first heard Solomon Burke sing that song in the first season, I listened to it a million times. Because I thought, man, if I could ever be lucky enough to sing that song someday. Because I just love the song. It's just Dan Penn and Bucky Lindsay wrote it. You know, uh, Do Right Woman, mm. The Dark End of the Street. One of the great, great, great songwriters of that era. And it was performed by the great, great, great Solomon Burke. And so it was like a gift. It just made me feel so... It's like one of those few times, not that few, but every once in a while, you know, if, if you're in showbiz, you get to do stuff that you just can't believe you get to do, mm-hmm. you know? And not that I felt unqualified. I mean, it was a little, but it's just, you don't expect those opportunities. If you haven't been getting them all along, you think, oh my gosh. And then we went back and forth with a couple of, you know, uh, those 80s uh, English bands that I, I didn't vibe with too much. And then, because I was just from not my era. And then he came up with that song and it was awesome. Right, he was prob- it was probably a throwback to Sandy and Kirsten and the mail truck and and in college, right? right. Oh, right, in the right, 80s, right, 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 right. The eighty, yeah. Why he wanted eighties? Yeah. I, I was in college in the seventies. Right, right. It was right. much better music. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, but that's the first time I. So I know the song was on the show before, but I remember you singing "Don't Give Up on Me," and that was my first you know, knowledge of this song, and I fell in love with it. But because of how you sang it so beautifully, and what an incredible song it is, and it just brought me to tears like every time I would hear it. And of course, sure enough, when I watched this episode, I was bawling. She's a crier. I'm a crier. Well, you know, the, sh- <laughs> the episode is moving and funny. And meanwhile, you guys are... Mindy, you are so... Whoa, you are like so tough on the <laughs> show. And and beautiful. And Rachel, you are oh. so effing funny. <laughs> now, the cashmere thing was had me right. Oh, well, my man. wife and I are both going laughing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the synopsis, just so we can kind of, you know, uh, yeah. whatever. Yeah, what we're talking about. Uh, <laughs> this episode is when Sandy seemingly forgot uh, his and Kirsten's 20th anniversary. He tries everything to make it up to her, but with Seth acting out to try and be with Alex and Ryan lying on his behalf, Kirsten fears leaving the boys alone and their anniversary may be doomed. DJ calls it off with Marissa after seeing her true motivations for dating him. This was directed by Michael Lang, written by John Stevens. It originally aired on January 13th. Oh my gosh. That's today. today January, January 13th. 13th. But that was 2005. That's so crazy. But how crazy we're, is we're that? on it. This is this happened last month too. So it I think did. we're gonna continue. It's very, very That's cool. kind of cool. Yeah. So yeah, so that's what we're talking about. And of course, Peter sings in this episode and it just brings the house down. Yes. Well. So let's get into the episode and then we can talk about um, a little bit more as we can incorporate. I want to hear more about the um, album. Have you ever forgotten uh, an anniversary in your real life, Peter? With Paula? No. <laughs> um, no, I did. You know, once though, the one time that I sent, f- was an anniversary, it was Valentine's Day, another, yeah, the, the horrible holiday. <laughs> I was out of town and I, I planned several days in advance to send Paula a beautiful bouquet of flowers. And I arrived on Val- Valentine's Day and I'm, hey, hey. So, did you get anything? <laughs> no. You didn't? So, you didn't get anything? No. Why'd you send? Yeah, I sent flowers. I said, uh-huh. And so, you, and so the next day, the flowers come. 
And they changed my note and said, sorry, they're late. <gasps> they changed it. They changed the note. So I didn't Are have a, I did not have a leg to stand on. And I mean, she believed me because she believed me. <laughs> but you know, it was very hard watching the episode. What? It was hard watching Sandy lie. Aww. And I kept thinking, boy, if I didn't have that song, I'd, I'd lobby for another way. <laughs> I'd lobby for, for, um, you know, either admitting that he forgot or say, what's so, what's so big about it? What's, right. what's the big deal about a 20th end? What makes that better than 19 or right. 21? <laughs> Sandy, it's important. <laughs> and why? Important for what? <laughs> you know, <laughs> rather than lying. So that was, that was tough. But, but, you know, the, the writers, I'm not a writer and I, and I didn't create this show and make it successful. So that was the only thing. Oh, Sandy, don't lie. You don't have to lie. Come on, just, there's another way. But it was such a great opening scene with the fact that, you know, you're standing there doing your tie and we hear, we hear the song in the background. Mm -hmm. And I was like, first I was like, what is Kirsten doing that makes your eyes go, whoa? <laughs> your reaction is like something's happening off screen. Or, whoa. Like she's like goose him or something. <laughs> but, but, and, but it was like, even I was like, what? And the math, the math, you're like thinking really quick and like, oh, no, I'm just teasing with you. But it is something that Sandy, being a public defender, will debate, defend, or argue like why he doesn't like Valentine's Day or mm. come on, I'm just joking with you. And, and, and maybe I can get out of this and, and you know, put a, put a little spin of humor on it. But Kirsten's just not quite having it. She's not going, she's not totally being punitive. She's not really being a jerk about it, but, but she's not happy. Right. No. So, uh, but, but, but right before that, before we get, um, go too, f too much further that the fact that, um, Seth calls Ryan and says oh, lie for me right. because yeah. he's spending the night with, with oh, Alex. That's what that, oh, oh, that's what the whole thing is. Yeah. Okay, yeah, right. yeah, yeah so yeah. he yeah. does, he does that and it's, and, and, and then you guys, then you have that, um, the, the, anniversary situation and then they then Ryan does the worst job lying oh my god and you guys are so good at just detecting his his bullshit detector or his bullshit well, Sandy's not a very good liar either <laughs> right <laughs> but, yeah, but you're like ah you can tell he's lying immediately especially with Ryan's specific answer on Seth's report what was it like 20th okay. century and agrarian, agriculture, agriculture in California, in California. <laughs> California. <laughs> and, and and even Kirsten's was like that's very specific and uh, <laughs> yeah. because they they know their son right they know yeah they're they're definitely <laughs> but um Sneaking around. Sneaking around. Did you ever ki catch your kids sneaking around? Do they lie to you ever? Jamie or Catherine ever do anything like that? <laughs> you know, we had a, a, a little around video games there in high school. <laughs> My son, I remember thinking, I'm going to get out on the roof <laughs> <laughs> and look in his window and see if he switches that screen. <laughs> and, so did, and then I thought, I don't want to do that. I don't want him to think I think he's a You know, it's so... We were very lucky. I mean, there was yeah. a, there was not. We we were pretty honest about everything. Yeah, yeah, that's big. I think in being a parent, I, I'd rather I'd rather them know me as, you know, a loser than a liar. <laughs> 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 I like that mentality. <laughs> but when we go to school, yes. of course, Seth is like novice move, Ryan. You don't give them specifics. You're like, a yeah. report, maybe, I don't know, science. You got to be like... That was, a, that was a good Ben. That was good. <laughs> no. Yeah, he did a terrible job. And then we're uh, with Summer and Zach and... Poor Summer. She Ryan walks into Seth. this. Yeah. She does. She, you know, Seth obviously That was pretty funny, that whole girlfriend's. thing. Yeah. <laughs> But Summer is not okay with it. Well, you guys have some good one, you know, these one-liners where they're kind of the Bickersons, I call them now. And <laughs> he's, he just walks right into it. And he's like, um, what? You're shacking up with? Oh, yeah. But for a teenager to see the guy that you really secretly still do love, we mm -hmm. know that. Mm -hmm. And to hear that he might be having sex. We don't know if he is or not. And yeah, I, I don't think he is with her. Well, didn't he? He spent the night, but it's very ambiguous because he tells... Sandy later on that it's not like that. And I feel like they tell each other the truth because remember he was so excited to tell Sandy that he was doing it with, with Summer. So did he or not? Well, we'll find out. I don't know. Wow. I, I feel like they are. Oh. I feel like, well, because then 
later summer is like, I was supposed to have sex for, oh, maybe they didn't. I don't I know. Don't. Doesn't look matter. At her. Doesn't look matter at, because look at she Alex. thinks about it. <laughs> <laughs> also, that would really piss me off. You Meanwhile, see, like, Olivia Wilde. Yeah, I'm going to say, that's his girlfriend. Of Hello. course I freak out. I'm like, <laughs> right. uh, right. <laughs> can I sleep with her? <laughs> um, yeah, so she's obviously very perturbed. Um, we also have the Riviera Magazine going on. This is a big thing <laughs> in, in, in Orange County. Riviera Magazine, They, I think they would re- regularly put like very wealthy, you know, right. M- media or, or real estate moguls on the cover. And Julie, I mean, it's interesting because Caleb's now just gotten out of, of jail and he was in the newspaper, but now Julie behind the scenes must have spun her magic and got them on the cover of the magazine. And it's just, anyway, so we haven't gotten to the actual shoot shoot of the magazine, but I love the fact that, that um, Marissa's just like, I need money. Classic teenager, mm-hmm. classic teenager. And I love love Alan Dale's delivery of like, oh, good God, just give <laughs> oh, her the good. money. Yeah. Shut up. How but good is Alan him. Dale? Oh, oh, oh my gosh. He's great in this episode. He's just like, he just does everything straight and it's hilarious. Yeah, everything is straight. <laughs> well, you know, it's amazing to have a story about teenagers. Mm. There's a great book about teenagers called Yes, Your Teen is Crazy uh-huh. <laughs> by Dr. Michael Bradley. Uh-huh. And it basically establishes that for teenagers... They really have no notion of consequence. And so it's a great idea to have a show about teenagers and parents because parents are essentially powerless. Mm. And teenagers could, can in one one moment, blow up the world, the next moment, melt your heart, and the third moment, blow your mind Mm. because they are just chock full of hormones and possibility and laments and rage and big feelings. And so it's, you know, it's, it's interesting that we, we sort of, we, 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 we endow it with this rich people's world and the, the, the outsiders coming in like Ben and even Sandy, but it's essentially, it's a story everybody identifies can understand. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, rich people are even more screwed up than we are. Yeah. <laughs> and their kids are worse than ours or <laughs> they're just like ours or you don't have to be you have no money to have crazy kids, even rich, you know. So there's a a kind of a validity to exploring those stories mm-hmm. about lying, about sex, about parents and it's it just seems to have such endless supply of f- fuel for the stories cuz it's they're so entertaining. I find myself laughing. <laughs> you know, this episode in particular, I think was so highly satisfying because this is one of Sandy's best episodes. And I think it's one of your, I think other than the pilot, you ha- it's the most screen time that Sandy has. Oh, that's interesting. And it really works in, when you see, and it didn't feel like, you know, because they were probably always trying to find that balance with the kids and mm-hmm. the parent storylines. Right. Josh has always said that Trojan right. horse, you know, we, we know that there was right. a lot of that going on. And, but the storylines, the kids' storylines affecting their relationship is so real. How many yeah. times have you, as a, a couple, my husband and I have been like, we would like to enjoy this, but the teenager is going through this and we're disagreeing about it and it's creating conflict with us. That is so universal. I mean, yeah. so going into that next um well, going into that, um, into the kitchen when Sandy's, th- then Sandy's making a big deal on the montage about, oh, yes, I've got a reservation at the montage. And you're making Alan it Alan Firstman a- montage. Hi, Yay. <laughs> Alan Firstman, the owner of the montage. We, we all became friends. You're very good friends. Yeah. With him, yeah. No, we, we love I was it. obsessed with that hotel. But, um, yeah, so it's, um, it, Kirsten's just being like, you know, she's got that, she's quietly just going, mm-hmm, the montage is doing this. She's just not, and you're still playing, and, K- and Sandy keeps doing it. He's like, don't worry about it, hon. And and so so in that respect, when you were re-watching it, you're like, why is he lying? No, I mean, it, I didn't, it wasn't that serious. I oh, just, okay. I, I just thought it was, you know, for me, a lot of watching these, I haven't either watched them ever or watched them in a long time. So it's, um, but was it fun? Did you enjoy watching? Oh, it's yeah. really fun to rewatch it. Isn't well, it? also, I was just so I just loved the cast and with the talented bunch and a fun bunch. Um, it was a, it was a, a cre- the cast, the synergy or the chemistry of the cast was a was a whole 
component in and of itself, I think. We talked about that with Brody because he was kind of like, you know, you think it's like this magic in a bottle kind of thing that mm-hmm. doesn't always come along. Oh, as you yeah. know, Peter, I mean, how many times, you know, you've done these things. I spent and... a lot of time telling Brody and Ben. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to, that doesn't happen every day, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. It's so true. I mean, I've never had anything since that's been quite like it and how special it was. And so that there's a lot of truth to that. You also have the luxury of doing a show nine, ten months out of a year. And for some people that could get monotonous, but I used to go to work so excited to go to work. But when we when we look at these episodes and these scenes of the Cohen family around the Cohen kitchen. There, you guys just have a. It's like your your chemistry, and it gets better and better as the series goes on. And it's just like, and you can see everybody either experimenting or taking chances or taking risks or doing something they hadn't ever done, which is the luxury you have in television. And even you know, and Josh could have put the kibosh on ad libs or you mm-hmm. know improvisations yeah. or you know been very rigid about some shows are like that yeah, yeah for sure. you know and he was he was you know he was mature beyond his years at that time and courageous enough not to feel that his story was being mm-hmm. you know yeah brody had a lot of improvisation yeah i mean we all did we all you know <laughs> we did it was nice to have that freedom yes for sure. and you know and and you think oh god this this not gonna work gonna work and you know <laughs> and you say oh that's dated you know, this kind of goes without saying, but turns out I am much better at eating fancy food than I am at cooking it. <laughs> <laughs> I love to cook, but I definitely, I don't always have the time. With Sun Basket, I can cook gourmet meals, but they don't take me all day to prepare. Sun Basket delivers the joy of eating with bold flavors, organic produce, and sustainable seafood and meats. Their award-winning chefs are constantly innovating with new recipes and global tastes to keep it interesting each week with dozens of options. I mean, I just find it fun to see what my weekly delivery is. You know, you can customize it or they'll pick for you. I like surprises. So I like when they pick for me um, because they have my dietary preferences. You know, I like to choose meals that are dairy-free sometimes, like Briar Skin can react to that. So I do that sometimes. It's just so cool that you can really customize this. And I love that you can actually, you can choose the meal kits if you feel like cooking, but they also have their fresh and ready meals that are fresh and ready. Also, I can stick to low carb or paleo, low calorie, vegetarian, vegan. I mean, the sun basket options are endless. They even have healthy snacks or grab and go breakfast items for busy mornings. So sometimes I can rely on them instead of going to the supermarket. Set up weekly delivery and skip a week when you need to. It's simple and easy and you will love it. Right now, Sun Basket is offering $90 off and a free gift when you order. Go to sunbasket.com slash OC and enter promo code OC at checkout. That's sunbasket dot com slash OC and enter promo code OC. You know I'm a fan of home workouts and with Beachbody, I'm able to make the most out of the time I have. Okay, so Adam and I, my husband, we just started, I'm on day four of the P90X3. It's a 90-day challenge and I did it this morning and I'm so excited to stick to something because I can work out every day. I'm a, I'm very, very disciplined that way, but I'm interested to do something that's been scientifically backed. And anyway, the access on my television through Beachbody is awesome. No, it's so easy for me because what I love to do is the Job One program because all of their workouts are only 20 minutes. So I know I can actually do it and get it done no matter where I am in the house because I can stream it to any any TV, whether it's the kitchen, the living room, the bedroom. Boom, done. Working out with Beachbody just works. There's no travel time to the gym. Who cares what I'm wearing or if I brush my hair? (laughs) And zero pressure on keeping up with what everyone else is doing because I'm at home. I can hit pause. (laughs) (laughs) Try any one of their programs free for 14 days like what I'm doing. I recommend Morning Meltdown, which is only 22 minutes and designed to do in the morning so you can start your day feeling strong and accomplished. Or try Bar Blend. That helps give you that long, lean look. No bulking. No gimmicks, no fads, just proven workouts to get results. The company has been around since 1985, and there are millions of success stories. Why try anything else? Join us and start for free today. Go to beachbody.com slash OC to get 14 days totally free. That's beachbody.com slash OC. Results vary based on starting point and effort. What I wanted to point out is, you know, that scene in the kitchen where you're talking about the montage and everything. My favorite is when Seth 
Even Seth knows it's your 20th anniversary. <laughs> you oh, yeah. Seen you're you're, you're, you're going to ground them. Get in here. Yeah. Do you have any idea what the, today is? Yeah. He's like, yeah, it's your 20th your, anniversary. Your reaction? <laughs> <laughs> it's classic because I don't think Sandy wants to be that guy. It's an, it's an interesting thing to look at the dynamic of um, Kirsten and Sandy as disciplinarians, because I just think Sandy is one of those guys that's flexible. You've got to be flexible in parenting and and really look at each situation to decide what's the best solution to a situation. Whereas Kirsten's like a little bit more, come on, let's rule. You're not ruling with an iron fist. It's just not one way or the um, one way. And so when, when you call him in to say, you know, I'm going to lay down the hammer, and there is something to be said for Seth going, my parents love me so much that whatever punishment I get, I still know I'm loved. And I think there's a lot of kids that are scared of their parents' discipline and punishment. So they'll do everything they can to get out of it and lie and, and, and all that. Seth's trying to do everything. And in some, in some ways as a parent, it's like, I know that my kids got to go out and fuck up and do things. It's fine. This is, they have to do that to learn. But Seth kind of takes it to, in this episode specifically, he's really pushing the boundaries. But so you have to, like you find, or Sandy says, I have, you have to be a bad guy to be a good dad. Yeah, I mean, there's elements of that. Also, I mean, Sandy has just cranked everything up to about 11 because he's standing on such thin ice. <laughs> you know, I'm doing it to make my wife no, happy. No, no, protest too much. Why? Well, you know, you should be... Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know. Because you're guilty So too. I'm totally... Because I screwed up. You know, right. so we're all just so dance, everyone's dancing gonna... as fast as we can. <laughs> yeah. In, 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 try, in trying not to disappoint well, and then the you're, and, and then when he says, um, we're trying to go away this weekend uh-huh. and, and you know, and we need to be able to, so you're going to stay with Julie and Caleb and they are like, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. And you're like, and you say, what did you say? Nothing like Julie Cooper to strike fear, <laughs> fear in the hearts yeah. of children everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I laughed at that. That was great. And they really worked. They were like, oh, no, fuck and no. Then I, I was like, well, okay, so picture them over at Caleb's big mansion. What would they be doing? <laughs> like, Julie's like putting spells on them. <laughs> I don't know. Sneaking out, probably. Yeah, oh, exactly. Wait, we skipped a scene, which I we have to talk about very quickly because Lindsay, you know, Lindsay oh. and, and Ryan are kind of getting hot and heavy. But at school, she is wearing the sexiest looking what? bra. What's, that's, what, that's what Paula said last night. <laughs> Well, is that what they were wearing in high school? I don't think so. I, it was I, very. It was a big departure from what we've seen, Lindsay. In. Shannon, right? Shannon, Shannon Lucio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's wonderful, but we had not seen that, and all of a sudden we're like, oh, hello, boobs! Like it was very, very like, risque. For I mean, Lindsay. I guess this is a teen. You know, it's like I'm feeling. She's she was got like the hormones stepping raging. it up or something. Yes, she's with the khaki pants. So she she's wearing the, khakis with the with, with the, the with, with what lingerie. Is like, like, what, there's some expression there, like rock and roll up top, and I don't know. Oh, yeah, party on top or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like like whatever they said about mullets. Yeah. <laughs> right, party Business in the up back. Front. Party in the back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's true. And her like pink eye or purple, whatever, it matched her top, yeah. her yeah. eyeshadow. No, she's just got that. Yeah, yeah. she's ready. Cat and he coming for him. And we've just <laughs> obviously learned that they're basically related to some extent. So this gets interesting. I think it would have been weird if they found out before, but I guess I I kept thinking like, is it really that weird? You know, the whole. I mean, look, they're not. Act- yeah, yeah. How are they related? The, well, so- they're not. It's well, Caleb's Caleb's daughter, right? So it's a half sister to Kirsten. Uh, so they're uh, not blood right, related. Right. Okay, no, okay, good. Okay, but right. if you've adopted him as your son and whatever. Yeah, the whole thing is just a little. It, yeah. it is a little bit awkward, but but and super I can awkward. Understand that super awkward. <laughs> um. Yeah, so also, so Summer and Marissa are in Summer's room studying and Summer's super upset that Seth has had sex before her. She decides that her and Zach are ready. Right, doing French. I do think it's funny that you guys are, it is a classic thing in Southern California to, uh, most kids learn Spanish. Right. And it, it's beneficial. And like CG, my daughter, She's, I told her to take Spanish and she decided to take Mandarin because I said no. So <laughs> and then said she, did, she took French and then finally she got to college. She's like, Mom, why didn't I listen to you? And I said, because you're a teenager yeah. Yeah. and you're, because you don't want to do what learned. I tell you to do. Right. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, okay. Lindsay comes over to study with Ryan. 
that happens. Okay, here, Kirsten and Sandy are eating ice cream, right? And you are wondering if grounding them was the right thing to do. Uh, so you decide to invite the boys down. Because Bill O'Reilly is on TV, and, <laughs> and that like, would That's be punishment. punishment enough. I was like, why said. is the channel on Bill O'Reilly? Yeah. <laughs> Kirsten's watching oh, it. Because she... it's a Fox show. Ah. <laughs> well, Kirsten is, well. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, Kirsten probably is watching it. <laughs> right. Right? <laughs> so you want to go get Seth to come down, and you find some Seth. Oh, trying right. to sneak out of his room. <laughs> like, really? <laughs> oh, my God. I laughed, I laughed yeah. out loud so hard at that. <laughs> uh, it was like, you're like, when you look in your face, like, like you're hurt. Sandy's like, really? <laughs> yeah, it's really funny. And then so Kirsten goes to get Ryan and she catches Ryan and Lindsay yeah, right. hot and heavy. Journey's on. Does Ryan actually put Journey they on? Always, Journey is very tied to Ben and yeah. I have a feeling because Ben loved Journey. Oh, well, they're great. Yeah. We think yeah, yeah. Yeah. But he's got his shirt off. Like, it's it's like, it's about to happen, happen. And Kirsten walks in. It's definitely super And she's awesome. got the same top on. <laughs> <laughs> right. It was that top that made it, uh, yeah. But now Kirsten, she's really, she's really down. And she's like, I just, I, I we can't leave. Here's, here, here are the consequences of their relationship. And I, we just, sorry, Sandy. And, and. Sandy's still convinced that they can go. And they try they try to apologize with pancakes. Right. Which seems to be the... And I just love Adam's, you know, his choices here where he's like, Dad, you're not going to believe it, but what? You're doing pull-ups? And he's like, yeah, he's good. He's good. You tap in here. And then, of course, ben Ryan's just like, we, we lied. We're sorry. And it won't happen again. Right. But they keep lying. They do keep lying. Uh, you try... Julie tries to have a heart-to-heart with Marissa. <laughs> to bribe her to come to the photo shoot. I mean, we, yeah, we just saw her, you know, t- Jimmy just left and she was all sad and everything. And, right. and, and, and she had that whole drunken thing. And it's kind of just, Julie just goes, when she doesn't know what to do, she just goes back to the wicked, wet, the wicked witch of the West Coast. She just goes back to, you know, she, for some reason, you know, at first I was like in the last episode, I was like, she's, it's, Julie's almost racist. And it's not that. It's just that she she doesn't want her daughter to make mistakes she did. Right. She came from the wrong side of the track. She's just, I don't know why she's so against DJ at all. I don't know. I think a couple of more years of high income and fancy living, she's on her way to being a Karen. Oh, Julie. Oh. <laughs> well, what the hell are you doing in my yard? <laughs> she basically does that. I can see that. <laughs> yeah, no, she definitely. But then we find out she gets humbled next season. Well, <laughs> yeah, if you don't yeah. remember that one, I want to get to this bait shop scene because it's one of my favorites oh, from this, this episode. Is the, one of the best scenes in the episode where Sandy goes to talk to Alex. You know, because oh, Seth's uh, been sneaking around with right. her. You know. Um, and you're asking Alex to straighten Seth out. In order to be a good dad, you have you got to be a bad guy. So, yeah, that's, this is embarrassing for Seth, sure. Like the dad going to talk to the hot girlfriend, whatever. But I loved this with you and Olivia because she's realizing what it's like to have parents that actually love you I and know, care. it was touching, actually. It was. She, made, she was very good in that very scene. Very good. I loved this scene. Um, we and, got to know a lot more about... Uh, Alex. Alex, we haven't had that much development, and and we haven't seen a parent in the bait shop right, right. before. And and this is where Sandy is different from other parents. And he he, it's like I'm going to go out and solve a problem, but I'm going to do it out of you're doing it out of love. You know, you're not doing it out of anger or fear, no fear or, or, threatening or, or, or threatening. You're doing it out of I need help, and you're right. and, and you're talking to talking to young people almost as a peer, yeah. like giving them respect, yeah. goes gets, gets you so much leverage. Or Absolutely. leverage. It just gets you a lot, lot, lot better solution, I think. Yeah, I like when you're like, I'm not the cops. It's, I'm much worse. Seth's dead. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, but it's true. And it, it does work. Um, okay, so Summer next tells Zach she wants to take it to the next step. <laughs> She's, of course, talking about sex. He thinks she means meeting the family. So... Now, Summer has to go meet <laughs> Zach's family. That what, was very funny. What was that line about where she, he says, I have to pick up I have to I, pick up my sister at the airport? And Summer goes, <laughs> why is she handicapped? Which is not a good word to use anymore. We um, acknowledge that. 
I don't understand that. I don't either, but my delivery of it, like I played it like genuinely like, oh, oh, is she handicapped or something? You like know, like but you don't, don't pick up people at the airport? I don't know. I didn't get it either. It's I, like I she guess needed, it's over my head. Did, she anyway. needed help? <laughs> well, there's yeah. Getting picked up? I don't know. It was a very, it was a very online. Maybe, maybe that's, maybe she can't get home on her own. I or? don't know. It was, I, I don't know. But Sorry, there's a little mystery still out there. We don't have to solve them all. <laughs> no, the mystery will reveal itself. Uh, the next scene, we find out that your talk with Alex worked because Seth goes to see her and she's like, nobody, we got to take take a step back. Yeah, and he instantly is like, did my dad come by the club? <laughs> and, and, and you know, we, we, keep ta- we keep tagging Seth as so selfish. He is, but he's it's more self-involved mm-hmm. than it is, you know, your parents are worried about you. This is the first, I feel compelled to listen to your parents. That's the power of Sandy Cohen. Absolutely. And and he understands, but he's still like, uh, you know? And uh, anyway, he just has to accept it. I guess Alex could have said, let's just tap the brakes until your parents' anniversary is over. But I think there's also that thing about, you know, she is, she does kind of live wild, we're finding out. For 17, she's, you know, she's definitely um, not living the same. No. And <laughs> Seth's world is expanding so fast. You know, before Ben got, before Ryan got there, it was like, <laughs> it was all yeah. in his head. Yeah. Video games and <laughs> it's still all, and all in his head. <laughs> yes, but he's, <laughs> but it's not all in his head. He spent the night with Olivia Wilde. And he yeah. so he's riding watched a high. fist fight and almost got into one. And, <laughs> and he's 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 participating in the world in a way he hadn't before. And, and he's that's a addicting. smart kid. Well, it's it just it's, you know it opens up windows and doors and connections in your. He's a bright kid, you know. Yeah. So um, you can. It's fun to see him, you know, try to manage all the world is offering him <laughs> in this moment. And that he succeeds in leading with his heart. Right. Right. And his, which is what happens when that's how he has been treated in his life. I'm so glad you're here because uh, (laughs) it was hard for, you know, when we watch these shows, we're like, Seth, why are you doing that? Well, you just described it perfectly. He's experiencing he's ex- something his he's, he's a teenager and it's fun. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's like, this is better than, what is the, 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 like, this is as good as a video game. Yeah. Right, right. It's, it, <laughs> right, if not he's better, living it. the yeah. virtual oh, yeah. world. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. But, but then that takes us to one of the best scenes of the episode because you and Kelly together are so dynamic and, you know, she's, she's sitting there um, by the pool and she's, Pissed. S- simmering. Mm. She's yeah. screaming inside. Whatever's going on. And she's so convinced. She's still convinced that the boys can't. She can't leave the boys alone. And she s- says, I have to tell Ryan that he can't see. She wants to tell Ryan that she he can't see. Lindsay. Lindsay. Right. And, and I keep trying to put myself in her position for that. Like, it's just weird. If somebody all of a sudden just is your is your blood relative and now and then you're dating your son it's it is weird oh yeah it i think it is understandably weird and she's angry and all of a sudden this big argument and she brings up portland which is right. still not fair but it's showing that she's showing some resentments mm-hmm. and you guys go at it and and i should find it cute that you forgot our anniversary like that's Kel- but like don't get in an argument with kelly that's <laughs> kelly right there <laughs> she's she's a strong woman but and that, you know, I can't. And wonderful in the show. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, and and no, this the episode, you. the scene where you actually were calling them in and and grounding them, there was a look on Kelly's face that I hadn't seen in the show before. And it was like intense. Like she's, Kelly's got some deep, multi layered stuff going on as an actress. And, and it's just, a, it's a joy to watch her, her work. Mm. She's definitely got that going on. But that was a great, it's a great argument. And one of the things that I love about Sandy and Kirsten is that they they get in these intense arguments, but they they recover mm-hmm. quickly. That conflict resolution is important, as I say. And it's healthy. Right? And talking is important. Yeah. Absolutely. You have to, I keep saying absolutely. Sorry. That's but, um, all right. Absolutely works. <laughs> you know. But yeah, communication is the key to a, Understanding. Yes. It was a successful That was actually an AT&T ad. I remember back in the 60s. My mother was very big on communication. And I remember said, communication is the beginning of understanding. 
<laughs> Ain't that the truth? Well, that takes us into the next scene. One of my other favorite scenes, right? Sandy and Seth communicate. Communicating. <laughs> oh, come on. Come over. Let's do this. Sit oh, down. All right, all right. I mean, like if my, I think my dad used to do that from time to time, but it, it wasn't, it didn't feel safe. But your, your, the conversations with Sandy, Sandy and Seth, they just feel safe, you know? They just feel, um, there's so many kids out there that were watching this going, I wish my dad were like that. Yeah. No, no it's, it's very touching, you know? Because yeah. I still hear from people like that. And you, you understand the extent to which, you know, being a father is hard and being fathered can be very hard. And, you know, and, uh, you know, as I've said in my own spirit experience, I, I, I love my dad, um, but he never talked to me, mm. you know, so yeah, we would work together, you know, clean the gutters or fix stuff or, you know, try to learn plumbing. Um, but I'd ask him about the war, I'd ask him about anything, you know, he'd never expressed any real interest in what I did or, and then I heard from a cousin uh, who was a treasury agent, my cousin John. And I, when I was on the road and, and playing Red Bank in the bus and trucker Greece, he said, yeah, you know, your dad told me, called me up and said that you were going to be in town. I'd forgotten all about it. So I went, I went to the box office and they didn't have any seats. But he ended up sitting with the, the, the uh, spo follow spot operator. Oh, wow. <laughs> to come wow. see you on, on which show? In Greece. In, Greece. I, in a yeah. bus and truck at Red Bank, New Jersey, wow. which is an old wow. theater. And you could actually see the see through the state the holes in the stage oh my to the basement below but anyway so i was very touched to find out that my dad even knew Aww. where i was playing or what i'd be doing and so you never know about anything that's right? true but communication's a good thing i think that's there was it's a i had that kind of communication with my mother a lot and sandy does that he says did we do anything and he says no and and then and then seth says very honestly i just feel like I need to prove my worthiness to be around her. And then S Sandy says, at the expense of your parents' relationship. Like, if you, what you're doing has some consequences. And I think it finally lands on him. It's taken this whole episode for it that. It takes a lot for anything to land on right. Seth. I think that was putting a lot on Seth for in terms of, but Do yeah. You, yeah, I thought it was a pretty strong statement. Yeah, it was but, a little like, it was a little guilt. But, you know, it was a little, <laughs> and here's a little extra... Yeah. Dose of guilt just to think it right. tried, right. tried it again. Right. Well, but then Jewish guilt. Yeah, but then Ryan <laughs> says, How can we help? And we don't know exactly what that means yet, but No, we don't. Yeah. Wide leg jeans, chunky sneakers, the wardrobe you see us wear on the OC. Everything old is new again, right? Girlfriend Collective means that literally they turn plastic bottles and other wastes that would end up in a landfill into something new to wear. Girlfriend Collective creates responsibly sourced activewear for everyone from size extra, extra small to 6XL. They've got you covered from head to toe. Find pants with different compression levels for ultimate comfort, supportive and soft bras and underwear, workout dresses, joggers, sweats, beanies, and even cute slide sandals. I love this company. I mean, they used recycled materials. They use ethical manufacturing. They have inclusive sizing and they give back. I mean, I'm honored to wear these clothes. Every company should have this standard. Yeah, absolutely. I love shopping with any company that supports the environment. You just feel better about it. I got these really cute workout set, like a top, a workout bra top and leggings. Mm -hmm. Perfect for Pilates, perfect for any kind of workout around the house. I'm feeling good about what I'm wearing. <laughs> And Girlfriend makes their items in your go-to staple colors, but also makes fun, bright colors and new seasonal releases to choose from. They also have a garment take-back program called Re-Girlfriend. So once you're done loving your pieces, a long time from now, of course, send them back to be upcycled into new Girlfriend gear. For listeners of the show, Girlfriend Collective is offering $25 off your purchase of $100 or more when you go to girlfriend.com slash the OC. That's $25 off $100 or more when you go to girlfriend.com slash the OC. We did it. We made it through another eventful year and a busy holiday season. I had a lovely time with my family. A few people ended up with the with the cove. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I escaped it though. But you know what? Now I am ready to reset and focus on my health and wellness. And if you are too, you need to better understand what's going on inside. Give yourself more clarity and confidence. 
with Everly Well. Everly Well at-home lab tests give you physician-reviewed results and personalized insights so you can take action on your health and wellness, all at an affordable and transparent cost. Everly Well at-home lab tests give you physician-reviewed results and personalized insights so you can take action on your health and wellness, all at an affordable and transparent cost. So I ordered the woman's health test. It's a comprehensive hormone panel because balancing our ever-changing hormone levels, it's while challenging. And I wish I'd done it sooner. And honestly, I have never felt better. My hormones are balanced as of today. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I, you know, I chose to do the food sensitivity thing because I'm always wondering, like, I know I have to have some kind of allergy to something I'm eating because I don't feel right after certain foods. So I was able to do that. And honestly, it was, it was very eye-opening for me. I've had to like adjust a little bit, but I can still eat what I want. But just having that knowledge was great. I think it tests like 96 foods too. Here's how it works. Everly Well ships your at-home lab test straight to you with everything needed for a simple sample collection. Using the prepaid shipping label, mail your test back to a certified lab. In just days, your physician reviewed results and actionable insights are sent to your device. And you can share the results with your primary care physician to help guide next steps. And for listeners of the show, Everly Well is offering a special discount of 20% off an at-home lab test at everlywell.com slash OC. That's everlywell.com slash OC for 20% off your at-home lab test. everlywell.com slash OC. Then we have the whole Kirsten and Lindsay thing going on. This is harsh. This is, I, it was really harsh. Really harsh. I like felt it. You I know, did too. I thought, how you're going to cut your sister like, loose? And right. like, what? what? She's a and mother. And take this other guy in? What? I know. It's it's actually like, I. it was very hard for me to watch because she is a mother. And from that standpoint and that perspective, Talking to girl, a 16-year-old. Talking to a 16-year-old and basically being like, no, like, let's take a step back. You know, and I just, I really felt that. I felt really bad. Just remember this moment when you're in therapy in five years, okay? (laughs) You'll save a lot of time. Okay, get out of here. (laughs) Right, yeah, exactly. I'm setting you up for that. I could see Kirsten's, it's just like, she's so confused. There's so many things going on that we're not seeing. But it's, and even at the end when she kind of puts her head down and... She's mm. trying to work it out and mm-hmm. she doesn't have the answer. And you hear something else that um, I remember, and I don't know if it was a scene or not. I don't know if you noticed, Kelly's voice was really deep. She lost her voice once. And I think it may have been this, it may have been this scene or another one. She had no voice when she was talking like uh. this and she had to ADR, but I think she may have had a cold. But her, she's like, when she said that line, adopting Ryan was a really big deal. It was this deep (laughs) way. And I was like, I don't have another one in me. (laughs) (laughs) Right. But it is when I, you know, you think about that, just all of a sudden you have a blood relative. And so Kirsten usually does, I think, what society would expect her to do. Mm. I need to be gracious. I need to do this. But inside, she might be screaming. She's still screaming. She's still pissed off at her dad. She's, She's got a lot going on. So... I mean, I can understand it from that point of view, but it was right. hard, hard. It was. It really was. Yeah. Next, we see Summer with <laughs> Zach's mom and sister for <laughs> dinner. Because uh, dads love me. Oh, dad's not going to be here. Oh, fuck. <laughs> well, uh, I, love I honestly... That. I love that. I, I love that scene. <laughs> I think I feel that way myself personally. Like, I do much better, I think, with men than women. And I'm more intimidated if it's... You know what I mean? Uh-huh. And so I could I could relate to Summer here. She's like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> And uh, she makes a very funny mistake when his sister brings up cashmere. Oh my God, I love the cashmere. Oh my God, I like cashmina. <laughs> cashmere? Oh, pashmina. That was the has big that thing ever, Has that ever happened to you? I was talking to somebody, a very, 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 like literally a rocket scientist. He was talking about being in India for a wedding. And, and I was like, did you experience Bollywood at all? Meaning like, did you watch any movies? And he went, no, India, not Bali. And I went, oh. and I was like, Awkward. <laughs> what? Um, but it was just somebody who doesn't watch TV, watch or, movies. TV or movies. I guess not. So, but it was like that feeling. That, so I could totally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, poor Summer. But this she is... dove in with both feet. Summer she, did. She, oh yes. Finally, something we can talk about. <laughs> oh my god, it was so embarrassing. <laughs> it was pretty funny. <laughs> I felt. I felt for her. But Zach seemed really like. He seemed okay. Oh Didn't yeah. 
<laughs> but it wasn't as, I'm sure, but but of course, we always think things are a bigger deal in our own minds oh, than God. they really are. Our mind is our <laughs> enemy. But then we go to the bait shop and Seth asks Alex for his job back. Alex shares that he doesn't realize how lucky he is to have a good dad. Yeah, she really wants to hammer it into him. Yeah, well, Sandy, you re- really did. <laughs> and so does he, really. Yeah. The power. <laughs> okay, well we, the, so the funny, the photo shoot. Oh my God. We <laughs> talked about this with Michael Lang. So in the script, and I wish I could find a photo. So in the script, it says the photo shoot. Julie is wearing a turban. Like, think Joan Crawford. Oh, I a, think I remember me a, actually reading those stage oh. Right. So think Joan Crawford in a <laughs> turban with like a big diamond. <laughs> oh my God. So they had one in the makeup trailer, right? And I, and I, I, we put it on. I've got this big five head, not a forehead, a big five head. It just looked ridiculous. <laughs> and, and, and they're like, we, and I said, you know what? Put it on. I'm walking to set to show for, I'm, let's put it on for rehearsal because we were up there at the big house. And, <laughs> and, and I said, I had the PA, it was probably Sean, the PA. Yeah. I'm like, tell them it doesn't work. And, and it was like, okay, I'll, I'm going to show you. And I walk on set. Michael's like, oh, I'm sure it looks fine. And I walk on set and he was like, yeah, no. I can't explain why it just didn't work, but it didn't work. So <sighs> That's actually really funny. <laughs> I know. I would have liked like, to have seen that. But yeah, no, but okay. So it, Alan Dale is hysterical. When DJ shows up and he's like, what's what? the yard guy doing here? He's like, what, can is he, he here to mow the lawn? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tell him to check for poison oak. <laughs> it's just like, I'll take care of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Marissa obviously pulled a number here. She's really, you know, yeah. And, and then of course, Julie going, don't worry, I'll take care of it. And you think maybe Julie's going to do something nice and she just comes out with yeah. a shot. Not a was, shot. Oh, I had, that was classic, like, dynasty. Oh, gosh. I mean, I played it that way on purpose. It was yeah. written that way. I played it that way. Oh, yeah. And you did it was, fantastic. It was Offered fun. Offered five grand to <laughs> never see her D- again. And DJ came back to see Marissa and gave him, yeah. gave him yeah. a Yeah, he is a good he guy. Was a good, I, absolutely a good man. He, he is, but he should have taken the money after what Marissa put him through. No. He's, <laughs> he's honorable. <laughs> It go. was honorable. <laughs> you walk away with your Chanel wallet. It's very clear, yeah. that logo. Um, so Ryan next tells Lindsay that their relationship is causing problems with Kirsten and Sandy and that they should be friends. So Lindsay just gets dumped by Kirsten. Really, she gets the short end of the stick. She really man. does. And now she gets dumped. I, by- felt, I, felt, bad yeah, I felt bad for her too. You know, the, the chances. And she said, yeah. And I, I, I was a choice. Do, do I go out? I could go yeah. out with you or I, you know, could live with sister. my sister. And she, and guess what? Yeah. But do you think, but do you see Ryan's side of it? Oh it's, yeah. It, yeah. Of he he absolutely is like, yeah. they've done so much for me because the, the last conversation we saw was, Hey, I thought you, Sandy said, I thought you guys were going to the, into the friend zone. You lied to us. I'm sorry. I mean, right now, Sandy, whether it's right or wrong, he's like, you guys are affecting my relationship. Mm-hmm. Kirsten has been punishing you. Right. For for whatever's going on. You're not quite sure whatever is going on. Yeah. Uh, so Sandy then tells Kirsten that he's going to take her to, to the Arches for dinner. It's their anniversary after all. With the big babysitters. And then two big old police officers <laughs> yes. show up as the babysitters. For a second, I was like, is this like a revisit to Julie's bachelorette party? <laughs> 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 What's happening here? <laughs> um, and then you guys are at the Arches and Kirsten apologizes for bringing up Portland. She's afraid of losing Seth. Yeah, that's really when you think when you so, when something's going on, it's like, what's really going on? Mm-hmm. And she really is feeling that, like, that loss of her son, that... You she's know, spiraling th- a bit. Yeah, she's or was. a lot, go- a lot going on, and I've yeah. got this new sister and my dad, and 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 what I, without we we don't we try not to talk too much about spoilers, but our but there's a lot coming go- coming up with yeah right with Kirsten and Sandy, and you know we got to pay just, attention to a lot of these yeah. things right. going on underneath the surface because the stuff doesn't come out of any you know it doesn't just happen mm-hmm. stuff's been going on right. so but and they're at the arches which is the famous um restaurant in Newport that's there for that's been there for years but you know now we found out Mick G owns it and it's called A restaurant oh wow they 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 didn't get the um arches name but it's called A restaurant so he bought it <laughs> yeah that's a cool thing oh that's cool I'm gonna yeah. have to go there once yeah so you guys are having dinner and the cops show up. The boys are gone. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. And then and then you have to ride in the cop car to get right, there. Yeah. <laughs> 
Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Which is great. So... Put the pedal to the metal, metal, fellas. But before we get to the bait shop... Before we get to the ba bait shop, what am I doing? Oh, Summer is in her room. Now <laughs> she has become, you know, she's trying to catch up on the news. She's like, if only it, it could oh, just... Oh, I remember that, yes. Put it on pause so I can catch up. And she's like, it's constantly changing. <laughs> but this is the beginning. You, you know, you did it with Passover. She had to educate herself right, on Passover. Right, Now she's going to educate herself on like world. the world. world affairs. And it's the it's the beginning of her awareness. And, and also, she's made the assumption that Zach is going to break up with her the same way you broke up with Seth after the disastrous lunch with right, your dad. Right, you're right. And you're making assumptions. Don't make assumptions. Don't Summer. make assumptions. It's, it's okay. It's it, going to be okay. It is. But it's really <laughs> funny, all of her new educational materials. <laughs> yeah. Kofi Annan works for the United Airlines. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. I think he like, works for United Airlines or something. <laughs> it's pretty good. See, Summer's world is expanding, too. Yeah. True. Yeah, it's Woo. parallels. I like that. So Sandy and Kirsten are in the back of the cop car, and he says he knows where the boys are. How do you know where the boys are? Oh, 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 oh. oh now we know. Just give me a minute. <laughs> <laughs> they arrive at the bait shop, and surprise! surprise! Sandy has planned a surprise anniversary party. And Ryan and Seth, they're so good on stage. They it's like they've been on stage sweet. for all their lives. <laughs> <laughs> really sweet. And they give a heartwarming speech. But after that, you know, Sandy gets ready to get on stage. Oh, I think this is so funny. It's she, Kirsten's like, no, no, yeah. no, no. And I, I had to write, I'm like, is this a good gift? Have you ever sung for Paula like this? Like, yeah. everyone gets a song dedicated to them at some point. Would this be a good gift? It would be, right? To sing, sing to sing Sarah to your, your wife. To like, don't give up on me. This is like you're, you know. Yeah, I got. I yeah, think it is. Yeah, I think it is. It's because because of what the song expresses. Yeah, and, sure. You know, it's an apology. Right. The know? other thing I noticed it was called Sandy Cohen in the news, and all of a sudden I went, oh, like Huey Lewis yeah. in the right. news and the power of love of the of the name of the episode. Right. Because I always like to know where the name of the episode. Right. Comes right. Right. From. It was such a grand gesture, even though Kirsten the whole time is like, oh, God, like, don't tell him. Like, you know. Your, your husband's a rock star, Alex says. No, yeah. Don't tell him that. <laughs> I, that was good, that. that. Otherwise, it would have been too much. If it was like, oh, well, maybe he can start recording now. Like, <laughs> well, you know, you know, But it's you know, more, it more realistic. Oh, don't get him. Oh, don't, don't, right. don't encourage Which him. It, but it was endearing. And then yeah. she's also really genuinely enjoying it and touched. But then they have, the, you know, the endearing thing of like, please don't tell him. How right. good he is. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, because it's television, we have to have scenes over your song. And right. I just kept going, go back, come back to Peter. I know, me too. <laughs> I felt the same. I was like, come on, I'm really enjoying this. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we do find that Zach isn't breaking up with Summer. He's yeah. like, I like you because you're not like the rest of my family. There's so many different ways to be smart. Yeah. Which is super endearing and a great yes, thing for a guy a to say. what a good thing to say. Right? Yeah, really sweet. And then you tell Marissa what you did. You offered DJ 5K. As a test. <laughs> which I don't know about that. Yeah, that I don't know like, about that either. That was a little, that was a little reverse engineering. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. It was a test. And he failed. Yeah, it was a test. <laughs> and I like this moment with Kirsten and Ryan. She apologizes for freaking out. And he tells her that they should be friends. And then she says that they should dance. She's not saying... I give you my blessing. Go get married. No. She's saying, oh, why don't you ask her to dance? Yeah. yeah. But it was sweet. It yeah, was like it was a sweet. it was a gesture for yeah. sure. Um he's dancing a lot. Ryan's dancing this season. Out of out of character, but yes. Yeah. Uh Kirsten thanks Alex for the party. Here we see that Alex, you know, she's getting the example that she can be accepted by parents, which I really think is sweet because Seth is like, no, no, no. Like they're cool, you know? Yeah. And I like that a lot. I like bringing her in. Yeah. yeah. Right. I do too. Uh, Marissa stands on the pier. DJ shows up. He breaks up with her. It's a lovely scene though. Mm. Because what's interesting is DJ says, look, some of what your mom was said was right. You did like me, but I don't think you liked me as much as you hate her. So let's, you know. I don't know. It was, it was a writer's way to end the character, mm -hmm. I guess, because I don't think we see DJ again. Oh, we don't? No. Oh. Um, yeah. But yeah, he ended on like very, yeah. you know, yeah, admirable, yeah. you know, yeah, integrity. It was, yeah. And you know, it's, it's what we find that Marissa has very mature moments and very hurt child, inner child moments. Like last episode, she had some very 
important adult things to say to Jimmy. And, right. And, and now, you know, you know, you know, teenagers can be very, very um, wise, wise for their years. So they ended it, you know, nicely. They did. And so this, obviously, we touched on this, Peter, you know, you singing in this episode and then you getting to create an album that came from you singing on this episode. So, yeah, the episode aired. And how did the album happen? Yes. Well, first of all, the version of the song, the way the song, you know, evolved is uh, they introduced me to a f- producer they were thinking about. And, said, well, you know, he's kind of, you know, he's long hair. And it's, you know, he's an alternative student. My, I don't know. I said, great, let's, let me meet him. And it was Bob Thiel Jr., he and I are still great friends. <laughs> our kids are great. Owen Thiel, his son, and and uh, our daughter Catherine are work together. It's very talented. And Bob put together the most amazing band. Let me tell you who's playing on that track: um, Davy Farragher on bass, Ben Montench on piano, who is one of the original Heartbreakers with Tom Petty, and Dean Parks on guitar, who has played guitar for everybody in the world and uh, Joey Warnker, an amazing drummer. And um, have I forgotten anybody? I don't think we had any horns. Um, and Bob produced the session and, and I was so, as I said, it was such a thrill and I hadn't been singing a lot lately. So I spent a lot of time trying to get back into shape vocally and and I was like excited and nervous. I was driving down to the studio to record and this car pulls up and this beautiful woman is next to me. She rolls down and says, hey, I just want to tell you, I'm a lesbian, but I think you're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I said, thank you so much. <laughs> and it was really like, uh, thank you. It gave me just to like, all right, I'm not crazy. It's <laughs> like, it just like it was a little pat yeah, it on the back. gave you that boost. And then being in the studio with those guys. Yeah was amazing, you know? And so that, 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 and I was very nervous because I was covering Solomon Burke. Solomon Burke is the king of rock and soul. And, you know, he'd been performing, you know, since the late fifties, one of the greatest singers, greatest, you know, soul singers. And, and he had won a Grammy for that song and for that album. And here's this little, you know, white kid from the suburbs (laughs) singing this. And I really wanted to honor the song. And after this, the next day on the 14th of January, mm-hmm. 2004, I guess, uh, I got a message from production saying to call Solomon Burke at <gasps> this number. What? I was so nervous. I could just imagine what he was going to say, what I did to his song. I mean, I don't know if it, 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 it was Bucky Lindsay and, and, uh, and Dan Penn wrote the song, but as Solomon said to me once, write a word, get a third. So he might probably had, maybe he did have a credit on that. I don't know. But so I, I called the number. I said, and uh, somebody answers, hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, this is Peter Gallagher. May I please speak to Solomon Burke? And there's a pause. And he said, Peter Gallagher, you, sir, have soul. <gasps> oh. Oh, I just died. I, I just started. All over my body. I just I started to cry, and I said, "Thank you, thank you." And we talked, and we had a lovely conversation, and we exchanged numbers and stuff, and I mean, we really connected. We talked for quite a while, and and connected in a lot of ways, and it, it was kind of lovely. And he and he called. We exchanged numbers and stuff, and he called me about a week later. And he said, "Listen, how would you like to come uh, play with me on uh, down in uh, Dana Point?" at the blues festival and sing with the band. We can do that number. I said, oh my God, Solomon, I'd just be, I'd be over the moon. (laughs) So I had the nerve because he sings in about a half pitch higher than I do. And I just, I didn't even think, I said, do you think maybe you guys could do it half, half a step lower? Well, we'll see. (laughs) I forget his keyboard player, but the keyboard player wanted to kill me. Um, But we did. (laughs) But he had the he we had some of the uh, rhythm section from I mean the, the horn section from Earth Wind and Fire, and I just ran into the the drummer uh, uh, Hazi uh, 
the drummer from that session had a in town. He's and he said, "Man, we didn't know what to expect." And but he said very nice things to me. But so so Solomon and I got a chance to. Re, I, I'll show you pictures of somebody who was there taking pictures to perform together, and uh, and it just cemented our friendship. And I gave him a Celtic cross from Ireland. He was very religious. He has twenty two kids. <gasps> And what? um, and a funeral homes and a limo business. He had. He's no longer with us. So we went to his funeral, of course, and and um, and we just stayed in touch. And I I sent for this thing, and then he when he went to play the Vatican, he had the Pope say a mass for us. Aww. And then this crazy thing happened, where after the show came out, I got two record deal offers, one from Epic and one from Warner's. I thought, okay. The record business is in trouble if they are <laughs> offering my 50-year-old ass a deal, and I'm taking it. Because <laughs> right. how often in my life is this going to ever happen? Ever? No. And so I, I went with Steve Barnett at Epic Records, and he st stayed in his position long enough for the rest to get the film, the, the picture, not the picture, the record finished. And, um, and his idea was to do a, an album of all soul songs from the Stax era and Steve Cropper, the great guitar player, blues, uh, uh, the Blues Brothers, uh, uh, he co-wrote and played on Sitting on the Dock of the Bay. He's one of the essential kind of players in, in the Stax era. Uh, wanted, and so to make a long story short, they put together an unbelievable band. And I felt like a fraud trying to do a whole soul album. album. So I said, how about we do a couple of sh numbers from songs from the S Stax era, but we interpret other numbers in that, you know, that wonderful Memphis sound. And so I sang three songs by Isaac Hayes and David Porter, the great writers. But I still felt like a bit of a fraud. And I went down to Memphis and I called up Solomon. And he's also a preacher. I said, Solomon, I need your blessing. I, uh, I'm, I'm going in here to record and it's, it's such an opportunity. It's such a beautiful thing. And I just don't really want to, I just want to be able to give it my best, but I just, I, I do it because this is your world. And, and I just need your blessing to know that, you know, Peter. And he just, you know, he, he was amazing. He, he talked to me for quite a while in the, in the, uh, in the, parking lot and then i went in and did the record in seven days and and had to cover a few few things because my pipes were just completely shot by that but uh you know it was just uh you know as as these things we do in in show business when you have opportunities like this and you your paths cross with p people that you might they might not have crossed with otherwise it just you know enriches your life and certainly singing that song and knowing Solomon, getting to know Solomon and his kids and and uh unfortunately having to say goodbye to him uh uh you know it's just one of those f things I'll never forget and I'm proud of the record you know and I'm I'm I'm, I'm proud of it and <laughs> the producer was thinking <laughs> I think he probably wished he was producing for anybody but me but, he said, but after I started singing he says well, at least you don't sound like you're from Broadway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, I noticed it entered Billboard's top Heat Seekers chart at number six. Are what? you serious? Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> I had no idea. Yeah. Really. I just thought it was a total bomb. No. I mean, Steve and I toured. We, you know, we did talk shows and performed. And then I took the, I sang this, I, I did my own show and toured that with, with Bob, Bob was in the band. We had a great band. You also Several did a friends. you also did a video, and Kelly was in it. Yeah, and she agreed to be. It was great. Really? We came up, yeah, yeah, because yeah, we, we, uh, yeah, she was terrific. We started at the, um, at the, was it the Georgian on Ocean Ave in Santa oh, yeah. Monica? Sure. Yeah, yeah it's it so, so cool. sweet of her to, to do that to jump in. Yeah. Yeah. So for our listeners, um, you guys can check it out. I think I, I just I watched it on YouTube. You did? Yeah. What a fantastic story. And I know, what a, thank you. I mean, from, what an amazing thing. It was. So we have we have voicemails for you, Peter, from some three, fans. Two? Really? Two. Yeah. Is that a three? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> three. <laughs> 
Hi, Melinda. Hi, Rachel. I just wanted to say thanks for this awesome podcast. I'm addicted. I love listening to it. I have watched The OC twice now, and uh, my husband and I rewatched it with our 18 year old daughter um, this past year. And we're actually watching the last episode in the hotel in Nashville minutes before we had to move her into Vanderbilt because she had to finish it and see what happened. (laughs) Um, And so it was a really fun family thing. So thanks for that. And it's been wonderful listening to the podcast. And my question is, for Peter, we all loved you as the OC dad. And I'd love to know what was one of your favorite parenting in character moments on the OC? And what was one of your favorite uh, uh, Seth moments too? Well, my favorite, uh, one of my favorite moments with Seth I would have to be the uh, the facts of life. <laughs> yeah. I, I just felt so lucky to be saying those words <laughs> to him and for him to be saying those words to me. What's interesting about the parenting thing is Josh wrote a great show and, you know, gave me the words and the space to try to be a good parent. And he was also, again, mature and uh, confident beyond his years because he was also open-minded to listen to any suggestions because he was 26 and my wife and I had, had had two kids and we were the only actual parents in the cast. And my wife is very smart and reads a lot of books and she's a good parent. And we would read the script every week and we would talk about the parenting moments, she and I. And we, together we would have a, a couple of little s- suggestions or ideas for Josh that might, you know, make the parenting a little more, you know, there's some things that I was supposed to do if I had done them, I, I would have thought social services would have come in and taken me away. And he was so open right. and so accepting and so embracing of that. Not all of them all the time, but every week we would do that. So. It was really easy to be a father in those circumstances because the words were right and the the circumstances were good. And I have Josh to thank. And for the additional tweaks, you know, I have him to thank too for allowing my wife and me to bring our our own experience to bear a little. Um, so I can't actually remember a lot of, th- I mean, I can't, I, I do do remember the thing about the f- facts of life. And I just remember doing the scene and think, oh my God, I'm so lucky. Oh my gosh, this is so funny. I love the scene. I love the scene. Do you remember hitting him upside the head with the newspaper? <laughs> smack, smack, <laughs> smack. I did. Yeah. I did. <laughs> I did. I love that kid. He was, we, he was a yeah. great kid. They were all, all you, everybody was, I love, I love the whole cast. I still hmm. do. Still do. Hi, Melinda, Rachel, and Peter. We're Ellie and Anna, and we're from England. We're absolutely obsessed with the podcast, and we've watched every episode so far. Our question today is for Peter, and that is, could you tell us any funny stories about Rachel and Melinda from Camp Gallagher days? (laughs) Thank you. Oh, Oh, boy. We kind of covered it, (laughs) but we can always go over it again. (laughs) Yeah. It's so funny. I was just there in Connecticut last week. Really? I know. I just think about having a reunion. Ooh. I just think, thank God nobody got... In. I just remember Ben and I running full speed in the pitch black from the directly opposite ends of the fields and colliding yeah. completely at full <laughs> speed. And I was so shocked that neither of us broke anything. Right. <laughs> and we popped right back up. So that was a high point. I think we discussed Julie Cooper as, <laughs> as, the, as the prison <laughs> prison matron. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. That was scary. Julie was head of the prison and you just, you couldn't get free if, and, and Tate and I tried, but at least we found comfort in each other, holding each other's yeah. hands. Actually, I think that is what we, we touched on the fact that when Ben's kids are old enough and your kids are all old enough that we can do Capture the Flag in Connecticut with all the new kids. <laughs> oh, that'd be a riot. Wouldn't it be? Yeah, well, how, that'd how be How old a... were Catherine and Jamie at the time? Well, Jamie was... She was 10. No, 13. 13 and ja- Ka- Catherine was 11. about 10. 10 okay. or 11, yeah. Well, if we go off that, for yeah. years, Brian yeah. is 7. Well, might, yeah, well <laughs> you might want to ramp it up so I can actually walk out to the field <laughs> by the time we do that. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. Uh, so fun. And oh, 
and Rachel, I, I don't. I, I, I was just all high. I, all I remembered, <laughs> we all were, which is why Tate and I ended up holding hands for the whole time. Um, I, 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 I got paranoid and wanted to get out. <laughs> I want to leave. I don't remember much because it was so dark, and and we were so scared of you, Mindy. <laughs> That's the takeaway. <laughs> I've scared CG a few times with that look. I remember getting our bikinis and going in the pool the next day. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I remember that because I remember it was a pool like this uh, around grass. Yeah. Yeah. I bet it was not close to the house. Mm -mm. Yeah. Now we have bears. Lots of bears. I've so seen that. Yeah. Hello, Melinda, Rachel. I hope you're both doing well. My question is for Peter. So as a young Jewish man myself back then watching the OC as a kid, I loved the OC for many reasons. And one of them was because of the whole Jewish Cohen family. So for Peter, my question is, did you have any inspirations behind Sandy Cohen? I mean, obviously he was the father we all wanted to have. But your character really came off as authentic Jewish. And I wonder if you had any inspirations in general from anywhere and any insight on that, if you want to share. Thank you. Thank you. You're doing well. Um, I had a lot of inspiration. I mean, specifically, Barry Sheck, I, I sort of modeled in terms of his uh, role as a defense attorney. And, you know, I was, all, all my friends are Jewish. I, I was <laughs> born and raised in New York City. I was born in, born in New York City and raised outside the city and then returned to the city. And... I just thought the character was so, it kind of just found its place in me. And, you know, I can hear, I can hear different bits of my friends and some of Sandy Cohn in terms of his relationship to the law, Barry Sheck. And, a, and I, I spoke, went downtown and, and hung out with a, uh, a public defender, but it was, you know, I have to credit Josh. Mm -hmm. Josh Schwartz for really giving the character his voice and his authentic voice and for casting me, which I'm very grateful that he did. And thanks for your kind words. And I love Sandy Cohen and it's was one of the, one of my most favorite roles I've ever played. I agree with you because it starts with the writing. If the, if the character is, so well thought out and it has that voice. If you didn't have that, no matter what research you've done, it's hard to play that, you know, that role. Right. So if the writing is good and that was Josh's... And Josh is Jewish, of course. And yeah, so, you know, exactly. He, he knows what he... Yeah. 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 Speaking of Robert, Robert Altman, um, uh, that's how I first met Lyle was with Robert Altman. We were in Shortcuts together. Uh, yeah. And uh, my wife and I were always crazy about his music. And when our first child was being born we put together a music that you mean the playlist you know mm -hmm. and she was in labor for 19 hours so we listened to that playlist oh, wow. about 400 times <laughs> <laughs> and the premier song in that list was she's no lady she's my wife which has additional context Aww. if you consider it, as she's going through labor she's no lady she's my wife <laughs> <laughs> we were going to ask you to sing so can you give us a few more bars if i fall short if I don't make the grade, if your expectations aren't met in me today, there's always tomorrow or tomorrow night hanging the baby sooner or later. You know I'll get it right. Please don't give up on me. Oh, please don't give up on me. I know it's late. Oh my God. Oh my God, am I red? <laughs> oh, that's oh awesome. We love you. you. <laughs> We're like, ah. Sorry for the musicians out there if the intonation was a little weird. Oh but... no, God, thank you so much. That was very touching. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's such well, a that beautiful was... song. That's for Solomon. Thank and Dan Penn and Bucky Lindsay, but yeah. Solomon, the king of rock and soul. Yeah. Well, wow, on, on that note, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> ah. Thank you so much, Peter, for being here. Peter. It's it's been way too long. We are going to do that reunion soon. Oh, we will. As we soon will. As, we're coming to your place. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. We're never gonna top that, by the way. 
you singing. Yes, and our taking podcast. us out of this episode. That will never peak. be topped. That's the peak of this no, podcast. Don't be silly. Ugh. Yeah, well, I'm just glad I didn't screw up the words completely. <laughs> Well, thank you everyone for listening. Follow, rate, and review. Welcome to the OC Bitches wherever you listen to your podcasts. If you like to watch us, and you should, especially on this one, check it out on YouTube or on HBO Max. Bye, guys. See ya, bitches. Goodbye, bitches. (laughs) (laughs) Much love. Sandy Cohen loves you, bitches. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to start with the pilot episode and catch all of our episode recaps.